everyone, it's me, Anthony Coach, a guitarist on YouTube. Guitar playing and lead guitar playing, it's all strategies, isn't it? There's thousands of different approaches that you could take to playing lead guitar, composing a solo, improvising. So I want to offer you in this video one strategy that I think really works. And it's to do with revisualizing scales that you play. I'm going to play today over a backing track that's in the key of G major. The backing track's available on Patreon if you want it. It's made up of two chords. It's a 4-1 chord progression in the key of G major. Starting with a C major 7 chord and a resolving to a G major 7 chord. And I've chosen those two chords on purpose because a 4-1 chord progression, in my opinion, leaves you with um, more scope for not falling into the trap of playing what are called Avoid notes. You know, there's no wrong notes in music, but there's certainly some notes that you want to think about avoiding uh, for one reason or another. Clashes, mainly. So I've chosen this chord progression, 4-1, because there's, it's very easy to play just the G major scale over the top of them. And you're about to hear that. I'm going to play a G major scale simply up and down over that chord progression, and you're going to hear that there's not that many avoid notes. <laughs> You get away with playing all those notes. I think it sounds nice anyway. Uh, but it's a nice place to start. Because what I want to talk about is this, this thing. I reckon that you possibly visualise your scales like this. The major scale, the G major scale, looks a bit like this to you. But whenever I'm playing over that C major chord, I try my best, because I'm still working on this too, I try my best to switch my visualisation to this. What is that? Well, it's a C major arpeggio, but look, it's within the G major scale. I'm not, not switching too much. I'm not having to re, you know, rebuild up some bit of music theory from scratch. The foundation is there within the G major scale. Of course, chords come from scales when you harmonize scales, so it makes total sense that the C major arpeggio is going to be in that G major scale shape. That's the G major scale. Within that, if I do some careful selecting of the C major arpeggio, I don't even have to switch where my fingers are. I don't have to learn new fingerings. I just have to memorize that little skeleton of a pattern. The same applies when uh, the, it, the backing track resolves to G major 7. Uh, and then I switch my visualization to this, and I'm sure you're already way ahead of me as to what that is. That's a G major arpeggio. So what about that same backing track? How about to play simply up and down those arpeggios, messing around with the rhythm, just because I had to. Uh, but that's the only thing I mess around with. It's just straight up and down these arpeggios. And it, when you practice this stuff, it's very important to remember that it's not only a technical and memorization task as well, but top of the list, most important, it's an ear training exercise as well. Get your ears around this. way of practicing because you, you're rinsing this scale for all it's worth. You can just play the notes randomly, you know, I know it's not random, there's intuition and experience on the instrument and you're probably hitting chord tones anyway when you improvise randomly, um, but this is putting it in your mind, it's cementing it in your mind, you know, properly. Let me just use that word properly. 
Um, just so you're making that distinction between each chord. So what about this then? This is me playing uh, a cappella, no backing track. And the first one that you're going to hear is me, I'm thinking that the chord progression is changing, but I'm not outlining, I'm making an, a point here. This point is that a, a solo, you know, it's said by many musicians that a solo should imply chord changes even with no backing track. So what you're going to hear first is me thinking, oh, there's a chord change here, but not implying it. And hopefully what I want to get across is that you're going to be none the wiser. You're going to think, when was the chord change? But then the second one that you're going to hear, I'm going to hope that my playing was good enough to illustrate that I'm thinking C major 7, G major 7, that you can hear it in the chord tones that I'm emphasising. And that's an important word, I'm emphasising them. I'm, I've gone away from playing arpeggios here. I'm veering away from strict arpeggios. That'd be boring music, wouldn't it? That would be too boring. So I try and make it more musical. It's just noodling. It's one of my most favourite things to do. Anyway, here's the first example, uh, followed by that second example with more definite switching. I can hear it, I can definitely feel it when I'm playing. I try and make it look as if I'm not thinking about it, but I'm definitely thinking about it. My mind is, is whizzing around and I'm trying to map out these sounds and I'm trying to resolve on chord tones whenever I can. The natural progression of this is that you are about to hear me doing the same, but with the backing track included. And do you know what, I find this tough. I've had a week's holiday, I'm making excuses now, because I know that my playing isn't the best, what you're about to hear. Uh, in fact, I get the last note completely wrong, uh, but I left it in just because it's only music. What are you going to do? Complain. <laughs> um, so, you're about to hear me playing the solo stuff over the backing track. <laughs> You can see that there is development to be made there, there is work to be made there, there's practice to be made, to be put in there. I urge you to do this. That was just two chords. Imagine if I included a third one and a fourth one. That might be too tricky uh, to first start off. So what I would do is, instead of doing a 4-1 chord progression, I'd do a 2-1 chord progression. That would change my map. I would then no longer be thinking about a C major arpeggio there and a G major there, I'd be thinking of A minor arpeggio. That's an A minor 7. That's an A minor 7. Yeah, first was right, okay. Already you see that, that you can hear the cogs turning, it's making me think about it, but that arpeggio that I've just found, that would then be my new shape to think of whenever that A minor comes into it. That kind of stuff, 
you know, I'll, I'll reveal to you now is my favourite stuff to practice because it's tough, but it trains my ear, trains my musical ear. Because I don't just want to play scales over chords and rely on my experience to land on chord tones, maybe. This is an excellent exercise, <laughs> if I do say so myself. I didn't come up with it, I've not made this up, I'm just presenting it to you, so I'm allowed to say it's an amazing exercise. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Extra special thanks to these names at the top, because they support me on Patreon. You get some other videos on there uh, to do with the video that you've just seen. You're going to get the backing track over there for, for this video. Uh, anyway, thanks very much. You are all amazing guitarists, but as we all are, we're on a quest to get even better. So I urge you to practice this and to re-visualise your scales. Thanks very much. I'm Anthony Coach and I will see you in the next video.